Hello everyone and welcome back. Recently I went back to Crown Point, Indiana for the second annual barbecue competition. Now, if you don't remember or didn't know, about a year ago I did another video on this where I went to the first annual cook-off. I competed, we cooked baby back ribs. I didn't place in that competition, but it was a fun time all around. We ate and drank all day and socialized. It was real fun. But this year was different. I came in first place. I got a small trophy for my effort and bragging rights for another year until next year's contest. If you'd like to see the ribs I made that won this contest, stick around, I'll show you how I made them. So the first thing I did is take these ribs. Now they were already peeled ahead of time by the butcher shop, so that was nice. I didn't have to peel the skin off, but if you don't, uh, didn't have someone do that for you, make sure you, re you remove that silver skin on the back. I did a video, uh, I think it was something about spare ribs, how to do spare ribs, and I show a little bit on how to remove that in that video. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out that video. I'll put that link somewhere down below or up here somewhere, okay? But since these ribs were already skinned, I didn't need to do it. Just got right around to rubbing them up. Now, normally I would, uh, I would dry brine my meats by putting salt on them the night before and let them uh, dry brine in the fridge. But we didn't have that luxury. We got the ribs at 9 a.m. and had to turn in at 5. So I got right to it and went ahead and used a rub with salt in it. And the rub I chose this time was a, a rib by Steve Reichlin, uh, his Project Smoke brand. It was the Kansas City Smoke Rub uh, rub because I, I chose this rub because it had a great combination of savory and sweetness in it. Since this is a contest, when you go to judge contest, you want to make sure that that first bite uh, or two that the judge that the judges take out of these things is got the whole flavor spectrum you're looking to get right out of that first bite. And I thought this, uh, this Project Smoke Rub was it. So I rubbed them up and let them sit for a couple hours. Fired up my Kamado for about 225. Now I use my Sauber Q Cloud temperature controller with this thing. You don't have to do that, especially for something that only takes a few hours to cook. But I wanted to have a carefree day, hands off uh, afternoon. I wanted to walk around and socialize with all the other cooks and uh, attendees i didn't want to be bothered watching my fire all day and it worked great with, with with the fan down below and the temperature controller um, on the side tray and my phone with the link right to the controller via a uh, a hot spot that was built into the cyberq cloud i put the ribs on and let them smoke for two hours with some hickory wood and some natural lump charcoal then after two hours i took them off the foil now Normally when I do ribs at home, I don't bother foiling, especially on a Kamado. This is why I have a Kamado. You don't need to do a lot of these tricks and hacks to keep your food from drying out like you do on any, any other commercial, uh, cheap commercial grill, right? Uh, that's drafty, so, like a pellet smoker or a Weber kettle, let's say. But I wanted to make sure I won this and make sure the meat wasn't in any way dry at all because again, the judges want that first bite to be perfect, right? So. I went ahead after two hours, pulled these ribs off, and I double foiled them. But before I wrapped them up, I put a base coat of some honey and some butter with some turbinado sugar. Then I put the rubs in meat side down, topped it with some more butter, honey, sugar, and put a splash of apple cider in the bottom of the foil. Then I wrapped them up real tight, put them back on the grill, cooked them for another hour, took them off, unwrapped them, put the meat back on the grill, but while the meat was cooking for the last hour, I went ahead and took the juices that collected in the bottom of the foil packets. So that was the melted butter, the melted, uh, well, the honey, the, the, the sugar and the apple cider and the meat drippings, put them all in a little pot on a little camp stove and I went ahead and reduced it down to a glaze. Then I added my sauce. Now the sauce I chose was also another Steve Reichlin Project Smoked uh, sauce. I think it was called the lemon pepper sauce. Right, um, so I went ahead and added a good amount of that to, the, to this new glaze I had made, stirred it all in and thickened it up as well. Then with about a half hour left in my cooking time, I went ahead and started to glaze both sides of the ribs. And at the end of that hour, which was basically, well, four hours, two hours for being on, one hour foiled and about one hour um, unwrapped and glazed. I put them back in some foil, crimped them back up again and put them on the upper rack of my Kamado and close the vents to try to reduce the heat in there. I, I would have normally used a faux Cambro, which is basically a cooler that you just put the meat in to keep it warm, but my cooler was being used to serve some beer. 
I had some of my Oktoberfest beer that I had racked right out of these taps here into these small two gallon kegs, put them in a cooler with some ice and brought that with me to serve. And that was a hit too, by the way. So without a cooler, I just went ahead and closed the vents, turned the heat down and let them sit for probably another half hour until it came time to turn in the, the meat for, for judging. And I was a little worried about this because the meat had become so tender that uh, one of the racks actually broke trying to move it off the grill. So I thought, oh no, the meat's too tender. It's not supposed to be full off the bone tender for these kind of competitions, but uh, it is what it was. I may have, I should have maybe taken them off a little sooner, but uh, as I was eating the scraps, as I was cutting up the bones, um, I actually thought it was really good. So I thought I still had a chance. But finding four, because I had to have four bones to turn in, one for each judge, and each bone had to have meat on both sides. So as I tried to cut these very tender ribs, the ribs just fell apart. It was really hard to get four intact pieces of bone or, or, or bone pieces from three different slabs of ribs that I had. So I picked the best that I had, put it in our turn-in uh, turn box, which was a foam container lined with some green leaf lettuce and some uh, oranges in the, uh, in the corner. It's all aesthetic because this contest is judged on three categories. You have appearance on a score of two to nine, and let's see, flavor on a score of two to nine, and texture on a scale of two to nine. So it was a, with four judges in the scale, there was a potential of 108 total points, of which I got 97. So after I turned in the food and the judges were all trying the food, uh, secluded away in, in, inside a nearby house, we loitered around until it came time to announce the winners. So we lined this all up and went from third place to second place to first place. Now, being in this contest last year uh, and even this year, when they announced the third place and, and you figure out that you don't, well, I didn't get third. Okay, well, it's still second and first place. And then they announced the second place and you're like, oh, well, I didn't get that. Well, my ribs weren't that great. I must not have won. I must have been out, right? So I started feeling dejected right as they announced the second place winner. But when they announced my number, I couldn't believe it. I won. <laughs> it was awesome. My reaction was a little over the top, um, mainly, mainly because I was surprised. And it felt pretty darn good. Some high fives all around, some extra celebration with, with the other contestants. No bad feelings among anyone, right? I mean, we all had good ribs, we all cooked well that day. And we all had a good time, no matter what place anyone came in. It just felt good to win. So that's how I made award-winning ribs. Uh, it felt really good. Uh, this whole foil technique, although I, again, I, I wouldn't do this at home, um, did, did make the ribs have that little extra bit because I caught the drippings and I mixed it in with some butter and I think that took it up a notch. So maybe I'll consider doing it again in the future for, for even at home. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. I'll even put a little re recipe down below of, of what I did here today. So if you want to re reproduce what I did, you'll have it in writing. If you're a new viewer and not yet a subscriber, consider subscribing. I do a lot of homebrew and cooking videos and some DIYs and how-tos. And for the rest of you, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe.